Hello everyone, this is Rick, and welcome to Astral Club. The title of this episode is The Mental Plane. Yes, I'm going to take a stab at it. I'm not sure I'm up to the task, but I'm going to do my best to try to explain uh, what happens on the mental plane and what it's like. Before we get started, I just want to thank a new patron on Patreon. Uh, his YouTube name is Lightning Round, and he is an astral master. And if you'd like to join him, you get your early videos on Tuesday rather than having to wait until Saturday. And you get a direct email to me, and we can talk back and forth and you can ask questions and make comments, uh, that kind of thing. So if you're interested, there will be a link in the description. Also, I'd like to plug playlists. I have playlists on this channel. Uh, I've got a number of ones that you know you might be interested in. I've got an Astral Guide School playlist where there's just the uh, AGS episodes. I've got one for aliens in space. I've got one for time travel. One for questions and answers, and then just the uh, the whole playlist, which is Astral Club, where you have all 109 videos. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind, too. Okay, um, the mental plane. Before we get into that, uh, I just want to address the lower planes. Now, the physical plane is the one that is the lowest that we are the most familiar with. It's the plane that we operate in every day and for which we need a physical body. Now, the purpose of this channel is to help you astral project while you dwell on the physical plane. And so that astral projection happens in your astral body, which leaves your physical body and goes to the astral plane. And of course, there are many subplanes in the astral. Um, and um, But that is the next layer up. Now, the plane above the astral is the mental plane. So let's discuss how we get there first. Okay, well, if you want to get to the astral plane from the physical, you need to leave your physical body behind because that allows your astral body then to travel through the astral planes. To get to the mental plane, you have to park, as Robert Monroe said, your astral body so that you can then use your mental body to travel throughout the mental plane. It sounds relatively easy, <laughs> but it's a little bit more difficult than, than just that. You have to have reached a certain level of development to get up to the mental plane. Uh, I've been able to visit there briefly for a few times, but in order to dwell there, you have to have learned your physical lessons you have to have learned the lessons that are available to you on the astral plane. And you have to be willing to leave behind all the cares and the worries and the victories and the tragedies and the attachments that held you uh, to the physical and to a lesser extent, the astral. Going into the mental plane means leaving a lot of that baggage behind. Now you're still taking with you your soul achievements and love, uh, but um, all that other stuff that is heavy and, and has held you behind, you have now dealt with that and you are now ready to move into the mental plane. So what is it like after you've parked your astral body and you enter the mental plane. Well, the first thing that I recall that hit me was just one word, bliss. I 
felt that I existed in a world where I was surrounded by happiness. Every creature there was happy. Um, they were enjoying the highest spiritual bliss of which they were capable of. Um, it was a world where the uh, um, every aspiration you have can be achieved. The only limitation is your capacity to aspire. Once you get over the initial just flood of happiness, you start to sense the true nature and the source of life you begin to sense the immense amount of knowledge and truth that is just behind a veil. And you begin to sense it. And you wonder how you could have been ignorant your whole life in the physical and the astral. Here you've got truth and beauty transcending everything that any human has ever dreamed of. And you've got light that surpasses the, the amazing, any amazing glory you've ever, you've ever dreamed of. And everything seems to be, every dream you've ever had seems to be within your reach. On this uh, first level, which you could call the seventh level, any being you uh, meet, there's no lies, there's no hidden agendas, there's no envy, there's no uh, negative emotions as we turn them. Um, there's no competition, um, at least that zero-sum competition that we seem to have here on the physical, which is, in order for me to get ahead, you have to be left behind. No, here all are working towards greater perfection. And here, everyone is willing to support you as you are willing to support them in growth. If you're lucky enough to meet friends, and I actually met um, someone there uh, briefly who I had known before on Earth, who was a great teacher to me, um, but there was always a barrier between us. That barrier and any barrier is gone. There's no more separation. Um, my feelings and their feelings were no longer hidden. Uh, there was no worries about clumsy words that didn't quite get across what uh, the feelings and the thoughts were. Now, imagine a free interchange of ideas where... It's almost impossible to determine where you begin and end and where they begin and end. Uh, it becomes this perfect merging without ego, something which I had never experienced previously. Next, you realize what the truth is, the whole truth. It's, un it's, it's unveiled. Your eyes are unveiled. You can see your long line of past lives, and you can see what the purpose was, what you achieved, why you needed to achieve it. Uh, and you could see all your mistakes as well as your successes, and they all make sense. I don't know if that, does, if that is enough, but they all make sense now. There's no more, why did that happen? Why did this happen to me? It's like you glimpse the overall plan and now it makes perfect sense. On this level, I remember seeing artists and writers. Now, I've seen them both on the physical and the astral. And say, take artists, for instance, you know, in the physical, they're painting on canvas. In the astral, they're painting uh, by using thought forms. But in the mental, they become the painting. They are part of the painting. So they're not only producing this lovely work and masterpiece, but they become it and they understand what it is to be this 
masterpiece. Uh, it becomes part of their soul. Uh, I know that's that's vague, but that's the best way I can describe it. Uh, if you wish, you can view the past and the future, and you can see what really happened. Uh, and you can feel the actors who participated in those pasts and those futures. And you can tap into their feelings and their emotions. And you can see it as a complete tapestry. No longer is it just dates and events. You see the past and the future as part of one gigantic tapestry. And for that period of time, it all makes sense. You can see how it all fits together. Um, and it's, it's just a transformative experience. One thing that you do have to watch out for is there are waves that radiate through uh, at least this level. And it's easy to be attracted to one of the waves because they can carry you onto higher subplanes. But you might not be ready for those higher subplanes. So if you're tempted to hop on one of those waves, it's probably best to avoid them. But let me tell you, they are extremely attractive. And it was only a voice in my head perhaps guiding me, telling me to not hop on one of those waves at this point in time. One thing I don't want to forget to mention is the colors and uh, that radiate throughout the mental plane. They're unearthly colors, rich and vibrant. And they're not only beautiful, but you can become one with any of those colors and feel what that color is like and truly understand what green is and what blue is and what red is. I know that doesn't sound that interesting, but believe me, I found it extremely, uh, extremely powerful. As far as the inhabitants, there are humans, uh, elemental life forms. There are those we might consider aliens in that they haven't had human lifetimes. There's even creatures who used to be animals who are going through a different evolutionary climb than humans. Uh, I've also seen a couple of folks like myself who still have earthly bodies who are also on the mental checking it out, but uh, my opinion is, is that that's very rare, extremely rare, um, because there's very few folks who are capable of doing that. And I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you the way it is. If there's one emotion that flows throughout the entire mental plane, it's love. And it's um, it's everywhere. And it's not that selfish love. It's not that love that insists upon uh, reciprocity. That, oh, I give you this love and you have to give me something back. No, it's the selfless kind of love. The love that gives with absolutely no expectation of receiving in return. I saw some uh, religious um, folks as well. Um, there were some uh, Buddhists there and some Muslims and some Christians and a wide variety of other religions. The one thing, and I didn't spend a lot of time with them, but one thing I noticed was they weren't involved in worshiping so much as they were involved with learning the love that came from these religions. And using the mental plane to fully understand and appreciate that love. Um, there wasn't a lot of what we have here now, which is seemingly devotion to a single being or what have you, as if, you know, and worshiping them like a god. No, it was, it was learning the lessons and understanding the love that was involved. That's 
that's what they were doing there. Uh, one more thing I want to emphasize is that no one sends you to the mental plane. You have to be able to go there and then you have to want to be there and to feel at home there so that your your vibrations and your vibratory level is a match for whatever subplane that you end up dwelling on the mental plane. So that's you know how that works. The sixth plane, I really don't have much to say. Uh, it had less people on it, less beings on it, and it seemed that it was folks who had spent more time on that lower seventh level and that now we're ready for a gradual increase. And so there, there was many of the same types of people at the same development levels, but it was like they were now um, veterans. And so they went up to the sixth. But I really didn't observe too much of anything that was different. On the fifth level, it seemed that uh, the beings there who were of a religious bent were more concerned with helping those in the lower planes, right on down to the astral and the physical, with inspiring them to value love and the greatest and purest loves that could be found within the various religions. Um, they also help to discourage you know, division and hatred and jealousy and, and all those other things that unfortunately give religions a negative connotation. Now, the fourth subplane was very different. Here you've got uh, entities who are only interested in obtaining spiritual knowledge and truth. And everything they do is devoted towards seeking out of that pure truth. Quite often they discover new truths, which they then transfer or attempt to transfer down to the astral and down to the physical. And these truths generally inspire those who accept them to create more loving organizations and groups and to de-emphasize um, the elements of judgment and ego that, uh, that afflict many of these types of groups. Here you can be educated by the highest and most evolved teachers that exist in the multiverse. So uh, it's an enormous opportunity to learn uh, truth. You'll also find some of the greatest masters in art and music. Uh, people uh, like Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, Wagner, um, you can access some of the most beautiful and unearthly music as these masters continue to create. And it, um, it not, you don't only hear it, but it penetrates your being. And it tells you a story. Uh, and it gives you wisdom just by participating in this music. In essence, by being involved in their musical creation, just by listening to it, uh, you become part of the overall masterpiece here. And this works for painters and sculptors uh, as well. All sorts of artists. The third subplane is composed of a matter that is extremely fine, delicate, and ethereal. And it's intensely alive, pulsating with living fire. Uh, and it, it's, a, it's an evolutionary phase um, that has these enormous flashing colors and high vibrations that send out ripples throughout the surface. So as you're there, you're continually hit by these ripples or small waves that bring with them 
these this energy, this living fire and higher vibrations, and it, it's it's under it's undes it's indescribable. Um, everything there you can see it. It's lit. Uh, there's a translucency and a splendor to everything, and it's just there's radiant orbs everywhere you look. Uh, here also you have the opportunity to have higher consciousness so that when you review the um, your past or the past of others, especially advanced souls, you can study their experiences. You can also alter them. You can think that, well, what if they had done this? What would their path have been? So you can actually see the actual branches their lives would have taken if you if they had changed a particular decision and this is all within your grasp and you can do this for yourself you can do this for others you can do this for masters uh, and it, it gives you an overall idea as to just how it's all connected together and it begins to make even more sense on the second level it's much more sparsely populated than the third here you have souls that are very solitary as far as I could see. They are very much, I don't know, imagine the most meditative state you've ever been in to a power of 100. I think they're communing with the universe itself. Um... And so it's very it's very difficult to explain to you much more of what's going on because I really don't know. <laughs> That's really all I was able to observe there. Now the top level of the mental plane is there's only a handful of humans who've ever had lifetimes on Earth who are there. And there their very consciousness creates. Um, all they have to do is just think a thought and it comes into being. And I don't mean just on the mental. I mean it comes into being on the astral and even on the physical. I believe that a single thought from these uh, individuals could create a planet or could create intelligent life on a planet. I have no more information because you've gotten the entire amount that I have. <laughs> I promised you it it was just pieces because you're dealing with something here that is so rarefied and I have such limited experience, but I did my best. Now, as far as other populations, there are non-humans uh, on the mental. They're very hard to understand because we really have nothing in common. There is a basic sense of love and growth that I've noticed between all beings. But sometimes you really have to have something more in common than that in order to really connect uh, on, on any plane that I've experienced. Um, there are um, what's called devas there, and they are non-human types of entities. Um, that have uh, great wisdom to, uh, to share. There are elementals, and these are entities that identify with the, um, the various uh, elements in the universe. Uh, as I said before, there was also some developed animals who weren't really what we would consider animals anymore, but they had animal lifetimes on Earth and they reached a point where they went off on a different evolutionary um, line from what we humans have done. And it's taken them away from earthly physical lives and now they've reached a point where they're there on the mental plane. I didn't have a lot of connection with them though. I mean, quite frankly, they weren't really interested in interacting with me either. One thing that I did encounter briefly that very much uh, interested me 
is there are also life forms, <laughs> and I put that in parentheses or in caps, quotes, um, that you might consider artificial on the mental plane. They were constructed by physical beings somewhere in our universe. And it happens more than once. I know that. I can tell there's different types. And they have their own evolutionary sphere. And apparently, um, some of them are able to reach uh, this higher level and to have a astral and mental body. Um, but I really don't know any more than that. All I know is that they were quote-unquote, once upon a time, constructed beings, artificial, if you will. So it's very, uh, it's very interesting. So to sum it up, the, uh, the mental plane is as different from the astral as the astral is the physical. Uh, and uh, it's really a plane that exists, and it's part of our natural progression, and you get there by learning the lessons of the physical and then learning the lessons of the astral. And you get there on your own when you're ready. When you feel like you belong there, then you will go there. That's um, that's pretty much the sum total of what I know about the mental plane. Uh, if, you, uh, if you liked that, please hit the like button, share it with those of like minds, subscribe if you have not already. And please, I always love your questions and your comments. And if you feel drawn to um, contribute to Astro Club, there will be a link in the description for Patreon. Uh, this is Rick, and as always, I will see you on the Astral Plane.